Today I'm going to show you guys an awesome workflow that we use here at Flurn. Hey guys, welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace. You can find me on Twitter at AKNacer. Today we're talking workflow. Now I know that doesn't sound particularly exciting, but it is really important, especially as you get to create more and more images, you're going to need a really nice system to be able to access images. Let's say you took six months ago, you're going to want a good system to where you can find everything and have everything organized really well, especially if you guys are going to be bringing other people to kind of look at your images as well. Here in the studio, we have several different people that need to access the same set of files. So we need a really nice system to do it. So we're going to show you guys our system and uh, it's super easy. We actually use Lightroom for everything and uh, we're going to go ahead and import a photo shoot that we did today just for this. So let's put our card in our card reader. I'm going to hit import over here and uh, now we're going to see our images. This is Baxter. You guys might remember him from the Baxter Pro tutorial. Um, he lives in our studio now. Very cool guy. So we're going to import it. This is the name of the disk. In this case, it's no name. Um, we're going to copy this as a DNG. That's also important. Um, these happen to be JPEGs because uh, we recorded them with this camera just so they would be really small. It wouldn't take a long time to import. But if you guys are using CR2s or NEFs, that's totally cool. Um, but I would recommend copying as a DNG. Now, what Lightroom is going to do is it's going to put them in your pictures folder. Go ahead and create a date folder for the year and for the day. So let's go ahead and hit import. And up until now, this is probably something you guys all do anyway. So very quick and easy. I really do recommend using Lightroom. It's, in my opinion, the best tool for organizing your images. You can also do a lot of really great editing, but uh, Lightroom is what we use. So you can learn more down below. We'll just put a link to it if you want to pick it up. Okay. So here we have our images of uh, our Baxter shoot. Now, in this case, we only took a few shots because I didn't want it to take like an hour to import. But if you guys did take a lot of images, what you first want to do is kind of separate them out by um, category. So let's say you did an engagement shoot and you shot in front of the couple's favorite restaurant. So I might create a folder for restaurant and you also shot on a park bench. So I'd create a folder for park bench as well. And that's just going to help you stay really, really organized. So let's go ahead and show you guys how to do that. First thing we want to do is find our folder. I'm going to right click on here and we're going to go down to rename and we're going to just call this B A X T E R Baxter. There we go. Rename that. And now we're going to create, I'm going to go right click and say create folder inside of this one. And we're going to call this headshots. Okay. Now we're going to right click here as well and go to full body. Now, the really nice thing about Lightroom is that it's actually creating these images or sorry, these folders on my hard drive as well. So it's not just what's going on here in Lightroom. They're in my hard drive as well, all my hard drive as well. And I'll show you that in a minute. So we have, let's say our headshots and we want to move them into our headshots folder. So what we're going to do is shift click all of our headshots and we can move those into our headshots folder. Now we have our full body. Let's go ahead and shift click all those, move them into our full body folder. Very nice. Now you can see I can click on full body and only my full body images come up. Only my headshots come up over here or I can click and it will show everything. If you don't want it to show everything, simply go to library and say unclick show folders in subfolders. And now you won't see anything. You'll just be able to see the folders that are actually um, in each of the folders. But usually I keep this on show photos in subfolders. Okay. Now you have your images and let's say, let's go ahead and make a couple picks. Like I like that headshot. I think it's really nice. Let's go to a full body. Um, that full body looks also incredible. So we have our, a couple of our picks and what we want to do now is figure out a way to where we can get our picks to be separated out from the rest. And then we want to figure out how we're going to be editing them in an external editor like Photoshop. And then we want to figure out how we're going to put those out for like the web or print. So to do that, we create three more folders. We're going to create a master folder. We're going to create a selects folder and an output folder. And this is really super important. It makes it, it sounds like a lot of work up front, but it makes organization and everything very, very much easier and better in the long run. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to right click and say create folder in here. We're going to create a selects folder. We're going to right click and say master and we're going to create a output. There we go. So what we want to do now is populate these folders. So selects basically are the images that you select out. So 
we're going to go to Baxter and I'll just go to our flag. Let's bring this up here and we'll flag our picks. So these are the images that we just picked. You can flag so you can see just the picks. Now what we want to do is get these into our selects folder. Now I don't want to click and drag them like we did earlier because that would just move them. I want copies of these images and I want them formatted how I want them to show up for external editing. So what we're going to do is I'm going to right click on these images and we're going to go to export and then we're going to hit export. Now I've already created a, um, a preset which is selects but I'll basically just show you what this preset is and I select I suggest you guys create a preset here I'll show you how to create pre presets in one minute so we have our selects preset I recommend saying choose folder for later which is useful for presets and the image format is a tiff in 8 bits so all you have to do is image format change it from like JPEG whatever to tiff and then change this to 8 bit okay now we hit export and since earlier we said choose file um, which is useful for presets. We're going to choose our Baxter and now we're going to choose our selects. And you can see here, but just like what we said earlier, that it actually does create all of these files on your hard drive. So like full body, those are the images that are in full body. Those are the images that are in headshots. It created these files actually on my hard drive, which is really, really nice. Okay. So let's choose our selects folder. We're going to hit open and it's going to go ahead and export those out as eight bit TIFFs. And this is what I start off when I'm working in Photoshop. I start off with eight bit TIFFs. Okay, now we have our selects folder down here, but there's nothing in it. The reason is, it's not like constantly pulling information from these folders. You kind of have to tell it to pull information from them. So it's really not hard to do. You just right click and say synchronize folder and over here to synchronize. And what it's going to do is it's going to say, oh, there's two images in there. It's kind of like, you know, whenever you check your mail, you can just say like, do you want it to push it to you? Or do you want it to like, just pick it up every now and then? This is like, you know, go ahead and show me what's in this folder. So we have our selects, which is perfect. Okay, so now that we have our selects in our selects folder, let's go ahead and open up Photoshop. All right, there we go. We've opened up Photoshop and I'm gonna hit Command O to open. Now what's really nice is I can go to Pictures, 2013, Baxter and my selects. I, I really don't have to guess at all of where these are, how they're organized or anything like that. Um, I know that these aren't also organized like that, but now they will be. So Baxter and we have our selects and let's just say we want to edit um, that folder or sorry, that file. So we'll go ahead and convert it. If you have a change in your, um, in your image, sorry, in your color settings, I always recommend saying convert document colors to the working space. There we go. All right. So Baxter, you look awesome. Now let's just say we do a slight levels adjustment here. Really, this is not a tutorial on, you know, changing colors, but we'll just do, you know, something subtle, put some blues in our shadows. All right, that looks great. Now what I want to do is go ahead and save this out. So shift command S will bring up save as. Now, your selects are just the images that you used to edit. When you actually want to save out your PSDs or your multi-layer TIFFs, that's what goes inside of your master folder. So your master folder are those like PSD files. And I do recommend keeping these guys because you never know when you're going to need them again. So we're going to click on our master folder. We can just name this how we want. Let's say Baxter headshot. Okay. And you can make this a TIFF. TIFFs do support multiple layers or you can create a PSD. So we'll just go to Photoshop. So Baxter headshot dot PSD. And we'll hit save maximize compatibility okay so this is you know you can work and work and work on this image that's just where you save it now let's go back to Lightroom and remember we have to do the same thing here in master I know it sounds like a lot of work but it's going to save a lot of time in the back end when you're actually like trying to find oh okay that photo shoot that I did a year ago where's the Photoshop file oh here's the Photoshop file but I think I composited two different images in it which images did I composite do I have to go through in my entire catalog like, no, you just go to your master file and that's where the Photoshop files are. And if you composited two images, they'll both be in your selects file. So it makes it a lot easier. So we'll go to our master file and then we'll synchronize that folder as well. Okay. And there we have our Baxter headshot.psd. So in our Baxter, let's just go ahead and this is going to show all of our images. This is still our full body, our headshots our selects, and then our master. This is the actual PSD here. So it's very easy to find and we can edit it um, just, you know, 
we can just pull it open in Photoshop if we want to do that. OK, now comes our output folder. And this is a folder where you actually save things out for the web and prints and things like that. To do that, really not that hard. Right click, and again, we'll go to Export. And I'll show you guys how to create an output. OK, so we'll do Choose Folder for Later again. Image Format, now what we're going to do is we're going to choose a JPEG. OK, our quality about 60 looks to be pretty good. And we can say resize to fit. Let's just say our width is going to be 1,000 pixels. Let's go ahead and take that out. And this is going to be for web. So resolution will be 72. If it's for print, you want to keep that above 240, maybe about 300. So it's going to be a JPEG in sRGB color space, which is perfect for web. Quality of 60, resizing to fit with a width of 1,000 and a resolution of 72. Now, with all of these settings here, already applied, what we're going to do is hit Add, and I'm going to call this Output for Web. And this, so now I don't have to load all those settings in every time. I can just click on Output for Web, and it'll know what to do. OK, so let's hit Export. And again, because we saw the preset, we told it to choose the folder. Now we're going to click our Output. And we're going to click on that as well. So now we can just right click here, and we can say Synchronize Folder. You don't have to synchronize every single folder. Let's say you did, you know, you've got a couple more images in your master, a couple in your output. What you can do is right click on your entire Baxter folder and synchronize this entire folder and it'll repopulate every single subfolder within it, which is also very helpful. Okay, so we have our Baxter and now we have our output. So you can choose to rename them, you can do whatever we want, but now we have Baxter Baxter headshot.jpg, which is a thousand pixels wide. It is in sRGB color space, and it is ready to go on the web at 72. You can see zooming in is not really doing a whole lot here, because it's not, not that big to begin with. So now when you're ready to upload these images, you can just do it straight from your output folder. So everything is still intact. We've edited something through Photoshop. It's back here in our folder. Master is where your Photoshop and your multi-layer TIFFs go. Output is where your final output goes, and your selects are the images that you're going to put together to edit. And this is how we do organization here at Flurn, and it really, really is. It's a huge time saver, and it's a great system to have in place. Um, if you guys are working professionals and you plan on doing like digital text or retouching or working with other people on set, this is the system that most working professionals go with as well. So if you're familiar with this, you're going to show up to it. Uh, set and everyone's gonna be like, all right, cool. And they're gonna be like, okay, find me the, you know, find me the output folder in here and make sure you select out the, you know, tips and things like that. And you'll you'll know what to do from now on. So use this in your home and then use it in your professional life as well, guys. I know that was a lot to do, um, <laughs> but that's a really really great system to uh, keep in place. If you guys have any other great ideas or other systems you use for file organization, be sure to let us know in a comment down below. Thanks again for watching, guys. And I'll learn you later. Bye, everyone.